Hey, it's Nick here from Grace Gilgorilla. There's no YouTube intro today. We're gonna get straight to it. You know what we're making. You click the thumbnail. Let's get right to it. Now, the first thing we need to do is create this pile of stuff that we're then gonna texture and light. So if you're a Grace Gilgorilla Plus member, we're gonna be using these models under the doodad models. And I'll show you those in just a second. But if you're not a Grace Gilgorilla Plus member and you wanna follow along, just use these primitives up here. You could use cubes, spheres, figure, any one of these will work just fine. All right, since we're making these with the doodads, come down here and you could just double click on any one of these objects and they will just instantly be added to your scene. Let me zoom in here. And all I'm doing is I'm grabbing some of my favorite doodads and I highly encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, what's really fun about this technique is it turns out different every time because of the dynamics we're gonna use, because I select different doodads. And uh, at the end of this tutorial, if you like what you see, if you like your render, please head on over to Instagram and tag us. I wanna see what you guys create with this. It's a really fun technique. All right, so now that I have a few selected, uh, here's the real trick. All you have to do is select all these objects and we're gonna be using the dynamic place tool to separate out all these objects as if they have dynamics tags on them. So all you have to do is select this little tool over here called dynamic place and you'll see this little icon pop up. And when you see this icon, you know that it's working. And now check this out. All you have to do is click and hold in your interface and all of these objects instantly start to separate away from each other. If I let go and we orbit around, you see some of these are actually trying to intersect each other. And that's because some of these are hollow. And if you ever see that, you could just grab your move tool and just move it out of the way. Uh, sometimes if you get those hollow objects, that will happen. So just move those out. The rest seem to be working. And uh, let's go ahead and do that again. What's really fun is if you don't like the final result, all you have to do is select all your objects, grab the dynamic place again and click it again. So by clicking it, you're seeing all these objects are respecting their dynamic space. Here's a couple other things you could do with the dynamic uh, place object. Right here, you can see you can move that left and right. And you can also, if you grab the little square at the end, you can scale it. Uh, I call this scaling it. I know it's not scaling anything, but we're essentially like scaling the whole dynamic system up. And if we pull it down, it's kind of pushing it into each other. For example, this spring over here is still hanging out on its own. If we want it to be more clumpy, you can grab uh, this little cube here, this little cube at the end, either push it apart or pull it back together. You can see we have another intersection, that's fine. Go ahead and grab whatever's intersecting, pull it out. Grab them all again, grab dynamic place and squish them back together. It's just like that. Now, what if you want them all on all axis to squish together? Uh, well, that's what this diagonal one's for. This will do them all at the same uh, time. So you could kind of scale everything apart and then scale it and squish it all back together. So I use this technique all the time to create these fun little piles. And what's really cool is if you don't like what you uh, see, uh, you can rearrange it. You could even grab it and rotate the whole thing and move it around until you get what you want. Now, I'm digging this. I like this one. There's these two cubes uh, together I'm not a fan of, so I'm just gonna delete one. And uh, let's go ahead and grab maybe one of these, uh, I don't know, this thing here is fun. And uh, if you ever like everything in the project, but you just wanna move one thing, well, you can do that too. Go ahead and move the one that you or select the object you wanna move, come over to dynamic place. And again, you just grab the move tool and you can move it down. If it's stuck inside of something, you can just grab the regular move tool and you just move it out. Let's say I want this to be in the bottom, then grab dynamic place and push it back into place here. And now you're seeing it's respecting all of the dynamics and you can even start to arc direct this and say, no, I want this a little bit more forward in the scene. and. Let's go ahead and just push this right here. Lovely. Let's say I love that. Um, I also encourage you to move your camera around if you don't like what you see. Uh, this feels like a cool angle to me, um, but let's see if we could find another angle that is fun as well. This cylinder, I'm not a huge fan of right here, but let's say we move it, we could rotate it. Uh, rotating it that way is not gonna do much. Let's also just grab it and move it and just kind of replace it using the dynamic place tool. Now you don't wanna grab the end cause that's kind of moving it and there's no room. If you move this one, there we go. It'll zoom in. All right, that's a better angle. I don't mind this angle. I kind of really love this one, but I wanna see the spring more. So let's just cheat the spring down a little bit, grab dynamic place. And again, make sure that it's not touching anything. Okay, 
I'm liking what we're seeing. So uh, that's the basic trick for these doodads. What I do after this is usually just put it in a null just so I can move it all around together. And remember, all the dynamics are gone on this. There's no dynamic tags, there's none of that. It's all just done with this dynamic place tool. And by the way, if you're placing objects on a table, this dynamic place tool does a ton more. Highly encourage you to check it out. But for this one, that's all we got. We got all of our objects. So from here, it's really straightforward, guys. We light it, we texture it, we add the things that make it beautiful. Now, by default, we just have a gray scene. Uh, let's let's make this pretty, right? That's what we're all here to do. Uh, I'm gonna grab a, first of all, turn on Redshift. Uh, if you're using Octane, a lot of what we're gonna do is uh, the same in Octane and, and Arnold and Redshift. So uh, just follow along. If you know your own renderer, you could definitely follow along. And of course, as we use some of our materials, all the Grayscale Gorilla materials and all these assets are compatible with Octane, Redshift, and Arnold as well. So, all right. So for this one, let's use Redshift. Uh, if you don't see your Redshift menu, make sure you go to Edit, Preferences. Uh, let's go down to Renderer, Redshift, and turn this thing on. Hopefully by now, if you followed with some tutorials, you got this on. Redshift, Main, Menu. Leave that on so that this pops up. Once you see that, you're gonna go to Redshift. You're gonna go to Lights. You're gonna go to Dome Light. The dome light's just gonna give you a white HDRI around your scene. So if we hit render now, it's all gonna be lit by a flat white light. Still not looking good, but we're on our way there. Let's go click on our Redshift dome light, and here's where you wanna add an HDRI. If you're not familiar with the power of HDRI, it's an instant way to get beautiful lighting in your scene. If you have your own HDRI, you could click here, find it on your hard drive. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, hopefully you have Drop Zone installed. This is one of our plugins that helps do this really easily. Just drag your texture, or if you're using Octane, we have tutorials to show you how to do that, right into Drop Zone, and you instantly get an HDRI, and you get a HDRI link tag that now allows you to just select any one of our HDRIs, and it instantly shows up right in your viewport, ready to go. I'm gonna use some of these new ones here. We got Creative Spaces. I love this Creative Space 5. This is shot at uh, the Grayscale Gorilla office, actually, and the lighting is really cool on this one. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna remove this from the background. So to do that with Redshift, the best way to do that is to go up to the Redshift menu, select your lights and add another dome light. Now, your original light, your original HDRI, I want you to come down here and turn off the background. And then on the new HDRI, on the new dome light, come down here and go to your details tab. And we want to remove this background from the lighting. You could see without it, we had all this nice shadow and all this, all this beautiful lighting here, but this second HDRI kind of added on top of it. We don't want that. So go into your dome light, go to details and turn down all this stuff. Uh, usually diffuse and reflection will do most of it, but um, transmission, you could just crank all this down. And uh, we may even come back here and add a little fill light at the end. Uh, then from here, you can actually just change your background color. Uh, we can make it whatever we want. I wanna do something a little bit darker for this one for now, but we could always change it a little bit later. All right, so already we got something looking better. What are the things that make beautiful renders beautiful? Well, it's lighting and it's materials and it's cameras. So what are we missing? Well, we got some lighting. Let's get our camera. To add a Redshift camera, come on up here, grab your Redshift menu, go down to cameras, click on standard. Uh, now the standard camera is just gonna be a default 35 millimeter lens. I recommend you almost never use a 35 millimeter lens. Cameras are as important as lighting and materials when it comes to making a render look great. Now for this scene, uh, I want it to feel more like it's in a studio. And if I'm in a studio and I'm grabbing my camera, I'm grabbing something more like an 85 millimeter lens or maybe even like 110 millimeter lens, something like that. So I'm gonna try something a little bit higher first. This will allow me to back up and flatten a little bit of this out and it also make this cube a little bit less obnoxiously large. In fact, I already wanna make this cube a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and grab it and let's just shrink it down. You can do it. There's no rules here. I mean, there's a few rules, but it's okay. We're being creative. Uh, I'm gonna grab my dynamic place tool, push it up, and I already love it. I already love it, folks. Hopefully whatever you're seeing, you're in love with too. You don't have to absolutely love, love it, but you should like it. You know what I mean? All right, what do we do from here? Well, we have a camera. We're gonna set up depth of field. Uh, I'm gonna grab a null. I'm gonna name this focus, all right? You've maybe seen me do this before I do it in almost every scene file. I'm gonna drag this focus null into my Redshift camera to tell 
my camera what to be in focus at all times. In Redshift, you go to your optical tab. And if you wanna follow along with uh, Octane or Arnold, we have tutorials to show you how to do this. Make sure you check it out on YouTube. Down here in object is where this focus null goes. I'm gonna drag it in, I'm gonna let go. And now wherever I put this focus is where my camera focuses. And we're gonna do that in just a second, but we're missing a critical element here to help make a beautiful render beautiful. What is that? It's the materials, folks. I could hear you out there. Some of you were saying it. Uh, so let's add some beautiful materials to this scene and uh, we'll do our final tweaks. We'll make this one a really fast one today. All right, under materials, um, Honestly, you can drag any material you want on here. It's your pile of doodads. You do what you want, but I'm gonna show you some of my favorites that I've been playing with. Uh, first of all are the polystyrene foam materials. These are brand new and these are really beautiful and they catch light really, really awesome. Um, so I'm just gonna put this on, I don't know, let's call it this weird torus over here. And uh, you'll see, not only does it add it here, it'll add it here in our object menu and instantly it shows up right in our viewport. Now, I think we gotta scale this down a little bit. Anytime you wanna scale any of your materials down, just select it here. And I usually just go to tiles and I double it. So by doubling the tiles, it's just scaling that material by two essentially, like shrinking it down and tiling it more. And that looks more like styrofoam as far as the scale of the scene goes. We, we're not talking a ton about scale today, but scale is another one of those things that helps make beautiful renders beautiful. I'm telling you, all right. What else can we do? Let's grab one of these black ones just while we're at it. Uh, this is usually the process when I go a little crazy, I just start dragging stuff on and then we switch it if we don't like it. Um, all right, down here, I'm gonna go to our wood veneers and let's go ahead and make the cube wood. And let's grab another one of these here and let's try this back, dude. Um, what else? Let's go with uh, these patterned plastics are good. Highly recommend. These fiberglasses are cool. This orange fiberglass is like one of my favorite new materials. Uh, let's try that one. Um, colorful plastic. All right. These are like designed for doodads. <laughs> so uh, if you're following along out there and you haven't downloaded the colorful plastic collection, it's in your hub. Don't forget, it's all right here. Just go to your Grayscale Gorilla Hub. You're all set. All right, so these are really cool because they have these little micro details in them. And we could even add displacement later if we want as well. So I'm gonna grab some colors that kind of go together. Here's a little trick about this collection in particular. These have been put into palettes. So if you look here, we have P6, and then here we have P7, and then there's P8, and there's a bunch of these. What do these mean? Well, all of these are color palettes that all go together. So if you don't have a color palette for your project, you could just stick to one of these palettes and everything will start to blend together and the colors will work together. So in fact, let's just go ahead and replace all these with something from palette one. Uh, if you're following along, maybe you try a different palette, just look and see on anything you want to use and go for it. I'm dragging more stuff in, what are we missing? I'm saving this spring for last because I wanna do something more like a metal. Let's go up here to all and let's type in metal. And in the library here, you can see we have a ton of metals. Uh, let's go with gun metal. I'm just gonna drag this onto our little dude here. What are we missing? Well, it looks like there's something maybe in the back, but that's okay. We could add a metal to it as well. Let's go ahead and just grab one of these and bring it in and let's see what we got. All right, here's our first start. Let's rotate around, let's see what we got. We could find different angles, different things. Uh, different parts of our scene. Uh, really, as I rotate my camera around, I kind of like this composition. There's maybe a, a few too many uh, circles here. And it looks like I did find one more object that's not has a material on it right here. Uh, so let's, for this one, add one of our new felts to it. Let's start with that. That might be a, an obnoxious color, but I think that's okay. Uh, I really like this angle more. Um, and I definitely don't want that dark of a blue, so I'm just gonna replace that. Um, and all these are super drag and droppable, so you can make it really easy here. And uh, I like this angle better, but I, what I don't like is the lighting. Because I move my camera around, my lighting uh, obviously didn't follow with me, so I just have this HDRI that is too flat onto the scene. So I'm gonna go select our original dome light that has the HDRI on it, and I'm gonna go into coordinates and use this RH right here to rotate my lighting until I get something a little bit better. I like this one better. I'm gonna go off to the right here 
And here's where you can start to make your micro details. This, for example, I wanna rotate it. I love where it is. I just didn't like the rotation of it. I wanna see the, the points of this coming out here. Love it. And the cylinder and all this stuff's just kind of like a little bit dark in here. So what I might do is just delete this thing, hopefully to let a little bit more light in. This was too cluttered to my eye. There's a little bit of darkness here, but we could also fix that by adding a little bit of fill light, which I think we'll do right at the end. Okay, from here, there's quite a few options. Of course, we could change our background color to something a little bit brighter. So I did like that darker vibe, but you could also go with something more traditional, like if you click on uh, one of these colors that are in the scene, you may want to get something a little bit brighter. Now, if you go with something brighter, I would recommend a brighter HDRI. I'm desperately trying to make this one a fast one, guys, but there's so many little pieces to this if you're new to HDRIs and selecting lights. So if you want me to add those little side tips, let me know down in the comments. And if you want me to just shut up and get going, let me know too, because look, I'm listening. All right, so a brighter HDRI, what do I mean by that? Well, if we open up this HDRI, it is really contrasty. And you can see this side is very bright and very lit, and this side's almost dark, it's almost black. There's a few things you could do if you like the overall lighting to help with this. One thing is to come into this secondary background HDRI that we created and really simply just turn up the diffuse and reflection a little bit. And as we do that, you're gonna see some of that light is now spilling onto the object. And it's also green, by the way, if we crank this, you're gonna see it's actually that green color is filling in and spilling onto the object, almost as if there's a real backdrop back here and it's adding light to the scene. So you can see if we turn it down here, intensity to zero, you can see the background changes, but also all of this is super dark. And if we set this back to one, it, we have our fill back. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to add something in your scene for it to bounce off of. So if I remove this and I just grab a big old cube, um, by default, the cube is like so much bigger than our scene. But if we shrink it on, the Z axis, we could turn this into a little wall and we could then grab our move tool, move our cube out of the way and look at what we got now. We have light bouncing off this cube and hitting these objects. Now you don't want the cube in the shot uh, and you could put a tag on here to remove it. But what I usually do is just move it off out of the camera's view. And now look, I get this nice bounced light off the cube all for free here without having to mess with my HDRI. And if all that doesn't work, folks, and you're just still not happy with your light, well, that's why we have this HDRI link tag ready to go. You could just select it, come into your HDRI menu here, and you could select hundreds of HDRIs, including studios. You could even bring in your own HDRIs right here in the user HDRIs tab. We have a video all about that too. But I'm digging this. I like our little fill light. I like our cue bouncing. Here's what I don't like. This material right here. I think it's the black styrofoam just looks like crappy leather on this object. Um, I think if it was in the light, it would look a bit better, but it's bugging me. And if it's bugging you, then you gotta go change it. All right, that's what I would recommend. Right now, stare at your screen and pick the one object that's bugging you the most and go fix it. I see two things I really wanna change. And so I'm just gonna go do them right along with you. Uh, first of all, I wanna make this something more shiny and that's just to get a little bit more light and it's just too dark down here. I'm gonna grab this aluminum, painted aluminum, and I'm gonna drag it right onto this object. Now, it's gonna override our material here and it should show up really quickly. And it's still a little bit dark, but I think that's okay. Um, let me try something a little bit brighter just in case, maybe this green, but I'm afraid the green might be a little bit too much for that background. We're also gonna change that background. It's just too obnoxious uh, in the color we picked. Um, here's the other thing that's bugging me. Uh, this cube here is still too big and this seam is bugging me. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna grab the cube. I'm gonna rotate it, all right? And I'm also gonna shrink it down. It's still too big for, for my brain here. And uh, I'm gonna grab our dynamic place tool again and just push it up and push it over. And what's cool is you just roll it around until it looks the way you want. Um, this is looking cool. I dig it. Let's do our final little touches here. Let's change our background one last time. I think I wanna go brighter with this. Let's pick this wood. I love that color even more. 
Uh, but I don't like how saturated it is. So we could just kind of move this up, make this more of a brighter color here. And I do wanna bring a little bit of that fill back. So let's go into our details and let's bring a little bit of fill back to fill it in. The last thing we didn't do yet is add our depth of field. Our focus is ready to go and it's all set up, but we didn't turn on the depth of field. How do you do it in Redshift? Well, come down here to your optical tab, go to your aperture, and I'm just gonna set this a little bit lower so we could see the result. And then I may have to move it up when we're finished. I'm gonna set this to two aperture. I'm gonna turn on our bokeh. And from here, you all you have to do now is tell Redshift what you want to be in focus. And to do that, because we set up that focus null, all we have to do is select our focus null and grab our place tool. Now it's right above the dynamic place tool. Grab it, go ahead and click on anything in your scene and whatever you click here, uh, if you just click and drag, that focus null will automatically snap to that object and that will stay in focus no matter what. And you could see, I don't know if you could see on my screen, but this is a little bit out of focus, this object, and this is in focus. And if I zoom in, you're gonna get a more exaggerated effect here. So let's go zoom in and let's see what we got. Well, I love this material, it's looking great. Um, the uh, colors are good here, the styrofoam's looking cool, and the depth of field I think looks good. It might be a little bit too much, but we could tone it down for the final render. All right, from here, we're so close. I think we're almost ready. If you do wanna add any displacement to any of these materials that have displacement built in, that's including all of the styrofoam, all of these plastics. We have tutorials all about it, but the real easy way, if you're following along and you don't wanna go click on another tutorial, is just to select the object you wanna add displacement to, go to tags, go to render RS object, and come down here to the geometry tab, turn on override, enabled, and down here you're gonna see screen space adaptive. Let's turn that off for now. And after that, I'm gonna set minimum edge length to one and set maximum subdivisions to, let's say four for now, and you can turn it up over time if you want. The last thing we need to do is turn on displacement and you should start to see the displacement right away in your scene. Now, already this is displaced and if there's too much displacement, you could turn it down just here by setting this to a smaller number. Now, this also works with the styrofoam. Let's go ahead and drag this tag on top of the same object that has styrofoam. In this case, it's right above it. I'm gonna hold down control on my keyboard, drag it up, and instantly, this will also use the built-in displacement map to start adding displacement. Hopefully you saw that. Can you see this? Let me zoom in. Look at all that displacement here and on this object, and now the geometry itself is moving, not just the bump map or the normal map. So, really powerful technique. Again, I'm gonna reference another video all about displacement that we have here on YouTube. But it's the only way I can do this video quickly is to send you off to learn more about this stuff if you are following along. All right, I think I, oh, see I moved my camera and now I like this angle more. See, we were wrapping it up, folks. I'm gonna move my cube over a little bit just to move it out of the scene because I like this camera angle more. And I'm gonna take one last moment to grab my HDRI and rotate it back again off to the right just to add a little bit more shadow. This is looking all right. If you like yours, render it out and show us in Instagram. All right, I'm liking this one. I'm gonna give it a B minus. If you don't like yours, if you wanna start over, it is okay, I do it all the time. Literally, you could delete this, grab some new doodads, grab some different objects. Maybe you're learning how to model something. Maybe you're learning how to use sweeps and all this stuff. Grab the things you're working with and make a fun little pile. I love these little experiments as a way to learn new tools and to play around with different color palettes, lighting, all these things without worrying about a full crazy scene that you have to build from scratch. So if you like what you rendered, we wanna see it, head on over to Instagram, tag us in it, and show us your doodad pile. Heck, use the hashtag doodad pile. Let's make it a thing. Is that a thing? Let's make it a thing. Quit trying to make doodad pile a thing, Nick. All right, that's it, no long outro either. If you like this kind of tutorial, let us know down in the comments. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for following along and we'll see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye everybody.